Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator and today I am going to be looking at some of the most common issues people have been having with the Phoenix A320. We're going to troubleshoot some of the biggest issues that get brought up on a regular basis and I'm going to show you how to fix them and how to prevent these issues from occurring in the first place. I've got loads of things to get through in this video today so without further ado let's get going. Number one on today's list is the flight control side stick fault telling you that you need to calibrate the null zones. This can happen for a number of reasons and it's a little bit sporadic. So it can happen on the ground, it can happen in the air, it can happen when we're flying. The main thing to remember is that actually it doesn't really affect too much but it is a very annoying warning. So we need a way to either stop it happening in the first place or we need to know how to clear it. It's basically telling us that something's not quite right with how things are set up with your side stick or whatever you're using to fly. One of the things that I do very quickly is I literally just circle my side stick and that kind of just resets everything a little bit and normally this will then go ahead and clear that ECAM warning on its own as it did just there. One of the other things you can try and do of course is go into the calibration settings and increasing the side stick null zone. I've just increased that to five. I know some people have even gone as high as 10% and getting good results. So have a little play with that and see if you can stop that happening. Number two is the inability to move the trim wheels. Now, when you park at the gate, cold and dark, your aircraft doesn't have any power. You can see here, I'm attempting to try and move my trim wheels. Even if I don't use the mouse and I use my key binding, whatever that is, set up to move the trim wheels as you would trim out a GA aircraft, you'll find that no matter what you do, you can't move the trim wheels. Well, we've got no engines running at the moment, which also means we don't have any hydraulic power. This is driven by hydraulics here in the air, so until you've got hydraulic power in those engines running, those trim wheels won't move, which is why we don't set the trim setting for takeoff until after we've started at least one engine. Number three is thrust lever calibration, and I've seen loads of people having trouble with this. You're moving your thrust levers, and you can see the left and right side of your hardware here not moving any of the values. So clearly the Phoenix isn't reading your inputs. You need to be very sure that in your settings for your controller, whatever you're using to control your thrust levers, you have it bound to the correct axis. So in the control options page, go ahead and find what you're using to control them. Check out the sensitivity activities page power management and under here the throttle should not be set to throttle one axis and throttle two axis with the zero to 100 percent option instead for the phoenix it has to be bound to just the throttle one axis throttle two axis without that zero to 100 percent option once this is all set, the Phoenix will recognize your thrust lever inputs and you can go ahead and calibrate your thrust levers. If, however, this still fails to work, then check out the link in the video description down below for a link to a troubleshooting help guide. Phoenix aircraft has the ability to save particular panel states. So if you always want to start with the APU running in a turnaround state, or you just want to start completely cold and dark, you do have that option here and you can set them on the EFB. One of the things that lots of people tell me, however, is that for some reason the panel saving state doesn't work. You can set this to default and after you've done that, you can also go in and set your particular airframe settings, kind of what callouts you want and all the various different options shown just here. Would you have done that however always remember to press the save default now another thing to remember is that these are livery specific so at the moment I'm in my EasyJet livery but say I spawned in in a British Airways livery then all of these settings would have reverted and be different because they are saved and bound to the livery that you are using Number five is a big one and a slightly more complicated topic and that is when you try to uplink your flight plan from Simbrief, sometimes you will get a message saying that the FMGS has an invalid flight plan uplink. Well, this is all to do with the different AIRAC cycles. An AIRAC cycle is basically a database of navigation points, airways, SIDs, stars, everything like that. And Microsoft Flight Simulator is usually one or two months behind the latest AIRAC cycle that is available due to when it decides to push an update. 
Now, if you have a Navigraph subscription, you can use the Navigraph Nav Data Manager to always upload the latest AirX cycle into Microsoft Flight Simulator. And with that, you can also make sure that your SimBrief account is also using the latest AirX cycle. So as you can see at the moment, the latest AirX cycle is version 2206. Now, if you don't have a Navigraph subscription, then you are reliant upon using a default Airx cycle from SimBrief, which is usually quite old and out of date, and potentially a much newer Airx cycle from Microsoft Flight Simulator, which means that both of those will not align. They will not be the same. If they're not the same, you're getting a flight plan in SimBrief, which is using a much older Airx cycle, and then trying to import that into Microsoft Flight Simulator which is using a much more up-to-date air act cycle two different cycles all the waypoints may have changed ever so slightly and thus you will end up with an invalid flight plan uplink the only way to make sure that this doesn't happen is to make sure that both your air act cycle in SimBrief and the air act cycle being used in the flight simulator are the same now, if you do have a Navigraph subscription, this is incredibly easy to do because with that, it means that your SimBrief Airx Cycle P can be updated to the absolute latest and you can use the Navigraph Nav Database Manager to update the Airx Cycle that has been used by the Phoenix as shown here in the video. As long as the Airx Cycle in both SimBrief and your aircraft match, then you shouldn't have any issues. This is why also at the start of each flight, we head to the data page and our aircraft status. And from here, we can check that we've got the latest Airx Cycle installed. The Phoenix aircraft has the ability to download the winds en route for your flight by on the A page requesting the winds. Now, this information is not downloaded live from the internet anywhere, so that means that it is actually potentially out of date. This data actually comes from your operational flight plan in SimBrief. So if you don't use SimBrief to create your flight plan, then this function is not available to you. The other thing is as well that depending on how old your operational flight plan is, say maybe be two to three hours old these winds could actually be incorrect always worth checking them on route to make sure that they are what you expect and if they're not what you expect the chances are of course that the winds have indeed changed since you created your operational flight plan Question number seven, when will sharklets and IE engines be available in the Phoenix? Well, the answer to that is we don't know. They will be ready when the team are happy and will make them available. The good news is though, that when they are ready and will be released, both the updates to IAE engines and sharklets will be free. I know many of you don't have time to do a full cockpit setup like we do on the Real Ops live streams and many of you like to just jump straight in on the runway and get going. With the Phoenix however, this can bring its own problems. Let's take a look. Starting on the runway will mean, of course, that your engines are running. That's just the way that Microsoft Flight Simulator works. It does mean, however, though, that when you want to import your Simbri flight plan and you do your init request, you're not going to get it as you would expect. In fact, it sends it to the secondary flight plan. The reason for this is when the engines are running, it can't update the initial flight plan. So you're going to have to go and manually transfer that across. This is done by inserting the AOC flight plan into the secondary page and then just activating the secondary flight plan. Once that's done, it's sent to your primary flight plan and you'll obviously have to go through and check your takeoff performance data. So now you've spawned in on the ground, you've set everything up, your flight plan's all ready to go, you're about to uh, turn off the parking brake, advance your thrust levers to take off, you do so and nothing happens. Well, you might want to go ahead and check the ground services page because spawning on the runway can sometimes leave those chocks and cones in place. These are magic chocks and cones. They create a force field around your aircraft and until those little cones move, you aren't going anywhere. Simply get rid of those and off you go. 
Flying at night in Microsoft Flight Simulator is of course visually stunning, but sometimes people ask where have the logo lights gone, because obviously when it's pitch black a little bit later on, then I can no longer see my aircraft, and I'm pretty certain the logo lights were on when we took off. Well, you were right, here we are on the takeoff roll, I can clearly see my logo lights are on, but the moment we rotate and there's no compression on the gear, the logo lights turn off. This is something similar to what real aircraft do, once they get up above a certain altitude or a specific configuration, whichever the airline has requested, then the logo lights turn off, obviously to save a little bit of power and things like that. Not only that, they are not really needed. If you are at 30,000 feet and someone can come along and see your logo lights, clearly they are too close. So logo lights are not there when you're airborne. But then somehow, magically, they are there when you land. Why is this? Well, it's when you select Config 2. When Flaps 2 are deployed, this triggers the logo lights to come back on because the aircraft knows that it's getting ready for landing. Manual flying is a joy in the Airbus thanks to its fly-by-wire technology, so at some point, usually on landing, you'll probably want to disconnect the autopilot which is used by pressing this button here. Of course, we need to make sure that that is assigned correctly in your control settings. If not, you'll get an ECAM warning. So what you'll need to go ahead and do is, in the control options, find what you're using to disable the autopilot and ensure that this is set to autopilot off and not autopilot toggle. It's well documented at the moment that the Phoenix A320 has far too much drag in the descent and as a consequence of this, usually when you're in managed descent, it will target the bottom of the speed gate. Of course, this is not that realistic unless you are very low on your profile, as I happen to be here, for example. But normally, even if you are on profile, sometimes it will target the bottom of the speed gate. The Phoenix team are aware of this and they are pushing a fix to to try and sort this out, which will of course be ready as soon as the team are happy. Failure management is something we can look at in detail on the Phoenix, but if you're playing around and you have a failure that you have selected by selecting a manual failure, you may want to just see what happens, but then once you've tried it out, you might not be happy and want to kind of undo that failure. Well, thankfully, this is the simulator, so this is the real world. Here I've just failed IR1 and just to see what it did, but let's say now that, okay, I want to just uh, get rid of that and continue on with my flight this you can do. All you need to do is select the clear button and then select the failed component. That's it, everything is now back working and you can cancel the master caution. This, however, only works for a manual failure that you have selected. If you have a failure that is triggered by the Phoenix itself, because you've got failures turned on, or you decide to just trigger a random failure, as I'll do just now, then this failure will only be able to be solved once you're back on the ground. Or, of course, you run the ECAM drill to try and rectify it. The technique I just showed you using the clear button to clear the failure will not work for Phoenix triggered failures, only the manual ones. Lots of people are saying they've got problems with the rudder authority when coming into land and in particularly in a crosswind when decrabbing. This again is a known bug and the Phoenix team are well aware of this. Basically, the rudder will stop working when the main landing gear has compression on it and will only restart working again once the nose wheel has touched down. This is of course no good, you want to be able to decrab through that final moment of flare. The team are aware of this and a fix is hopefully on the way. It's not just you, it's everybody. Including me, I set this up for a severe crosswind landing here at Amsterdam and just watch as I try and decrab, but the moment the main landing wheel gears touch down, suddenly I can no longer just point the aircraft to the left, it stops about there and now I'm stuck until that nose wheel comes down, I still can't get back on that center line and now I can have a little bit more authority and put the aircraft where I want. Sadly that was too late though, not a great landing. 
Not everybody is happy flying on VATSIM and many still use default air traffic control. The Phoenix though uses its own flight plan manager, meaning that it does not communicate with Microsoft Flight Simulator and Azobo. The only way around this if you wish to use default air traffic control is once you've got your SimBrief flight plan, you'll have to go ahead and download it. And then you can head back into Microsoft Flight Simulator and load this flight plan into the sim. Once it's loaded, ATC can now read this. Be sure to select a gate for your departure as otherwise by default you will start on the runway. Once you've loaded in, set up the Phoenix as you would normally, but you will have the option to use default air traffic control if you wish. Finally then, in an effort to try and get the Phoenix airborne, perhaps after a crash to desktop, where you just want a very quick start, one thing that lots of users try and do is simply slew the aircraft where they want to go. Sadly, this does not work for the Phoenix, and the Phoenix really hates slewing. It will give you all kinds of cautions and ECAM warnings, particularly if your engines weren't started at the time. You suddenly have no power. Obviously, this means that your rat is now out. Once your rat is out, you can't even put that away until you've landed and the ground crew can sort it. Not quite sure what's going on with the screen capture there, but you get the idea. So hopefully this video will have gone some way towards sorting any issues that you may have been having in the Phoenix. If there is an issue that you're currently having which I haven't covered in this video, please do leave a comment down below and I'll look to try and see if I can help you out with that as best I can. If you have found this video useful, please do leave a like and share amongst friends who may also be having similar issues. And of course, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any future live streams and more video content. Thanks so much for watching. Bye bye for now.